So after some time in contemplation, you finally decided that you want to step your toes into the psychedelic waters, right? You want to see what this whole thing's about. I mean, ego dissolution, therapeutic breakthroughs, and all sorts of amazing stories that you hear from all around the world. So maybe you want to know a few things. What substance should I start with? How much should I take? What's the optimal set and setting? And what are other ways that I can best prepare my mind for this mind-bending experience? So in this video, I will answer some most commonly asked questions, as well as share what I think at least to be essential principles or pillars, if you want to think of it that way, that will greatly help optimize your psychedelic experience and have the most safe trip possible. In my view, it's better to be safe than sorry, and preparing your mind as much as possible doesn't hurt. Psychedelics aren't for everybody, guys, and what may greatly help Johnny may severely scar Sarah. Humans are unique creatures with different backgrounds who are going to react differently to psychedelics. So you're going to be really careful and watch at your own peril when going into these things. And I understand that people are going to take psychedelics whether I make videos about it or not, but if I can help reduce the collateral and help optimize these trips for you guys so you can get the most out of it, then awesome. I've done my job. Now let me start off this psychedelic guide by saying that you don't actually need psychedelics and there are many different modalities out there that induce non-ordinary states of consciousness. Practices that I would argue are safer and more sustainable than psychedelics. So these practices include but are not limited to fasting, breathwork meditation, sweat lodging, sound healing, dark room isolation and lucid dreaming among others. Now, that being said, I realize that not everyone is going to go for these things and want to go for the more fantastical experiences that psychedelics have to offer. Believe it or not, the substance that I would actually recommend the most for a beginner is the mescaline containing some Pedro cactus, or Wachuma, as it's known in the Incan culture. In a nutshell, I would say San Pedro is a heart opener and almost like this gentle grandfather figure putting his arm around you and showing you the beauty of life you know that San Pedro was the experience that told me to start a YouTube channel and it gave me more direction and, and purpose than any other psychedelic and it also tends to be really gentle on the mind and the body and leaves this really nice afterglow effect however I have to mention that the only time I've ever taken San Pedro has been under the supervision of a practitioner and a shaman and so San Pedro could actually be a completely different experience if you do it you know, with your mates or at a, at a festival. I don't know, I haven't had any experience outside of the shamanic context. But all that being said, it's nice that you know, San Pedro is this great beginner psychedelic, but it may not be as accessible as, let's say, LSD or shrooms. So out of mushrooms and acid, which one would I choose for a beginner? Personally, I would say mushrooms is the better beginner one. Not necessarily because it's more gentle. In fact, mushrooms tend to be a little bit more confusing and not just based on my own personal experience, but from many different trip reports, it seems that mushrooms are more ruthless and they're more of an emotional roller coaster and harder to control. But you gotta also think that mushrooms is like a four to six hour trip whereas acid is about 10 hours, give or take. So even though mushrooms, which many people would report, is more challenging than acid, I would say that mushrooms tend to be more rewarding. You tend to feel an afterglow effect, you have this cleansing feeling, it's more... I know, personally, I feel like with mushrooms, you're communicating with this intelligence that's much greater than you, whereas with acid, yeah, of course, you can connect with that, but it's still, at least for me, I'm, I'm still within my own mind. Mushrooms, it's like I'm stepping into something much older, much wiser. Not everyone's gonna agree with me, and I completely understand that, but I, have, I can't help feeling this way. <laughs> I feel like with mushrooms, it's much more likely you're actually going to get psilocybin mushrooms, whereas with acid, there's a lot of kind of fakes and lookalikes and you know end bombs and all this kind of stuff. So you might think you're taking acid, but you're taking something else that's sort of similar but probably more damaging to your system. So if you are going to take acid, definitely, definitely get a substance testing kit. So it's all up to you guys. You can get just as a profound experience from LSD or mushrooms. It really depends on you and what you resonate with. I'm just sharing my own thoughts and opinions. 
to help you make a better decision. And with research, this is like knowing what dose to take, what, what, what is a low dose, what's a high dose, if you're taking mushrooms, what species of mushrooms are you taking, how does that differ to, let's say, the standard cubensis mushroom. The whole point of research is not necessarily to know what to expect, it's more to get all the basics down, you know, like not dying. <laughs> Just simple shit like that, like not mixing SSRIs with ayahuasca so you don't get serotonin syndrome. Or you don't eat two pizzas just before you go on this huge mushroom trip because then you're going to feel super nauseous and really bogged down. And... There are certain mental illnesses that react very adversely with psychedelics. You know, like bipolar for example is one, or schizophrenia. And then of course you're going to hear different stories from different places. But it's better to be safe than sorry, guys. And this is basically the whole foundation of this video and channel in many ways is safety first. Do not try to be a hero and go all Terence McKenna and do the whole five grams of psilocybin mushrooms in the dark. This, I mean, yeah, many people have had profound experiences with these mega doses, don't get me wrong, but to ignore the number of people who have gotten severely traumatized from this kind of reckless behavior, yeah, it's, it's quite scary. And if you really read, I know we like to read only the positive things of something, but if you actually go and do your research and read the most horrific psychedelic trips, I wouldn't wish that shit on my worst enemy, man. And I'm not saying this to scare you guys, it's just to help you become vigilant and become aware of the worst case scenarios. And to be fair guys, if you take all the precautions, you research what dose you're taking, you take the set setting very serious, you prepare your mind, and you do all the things that you're supposed to do, then most likely you're probably gonna have a really beneficial trip. Statistically, statistically. But at the same time, man, we gotta remind ourselves that reality doesn't give a fuck about the statistics. It could be scientifically proven for this one thing to be 99.99999% safe, but you might be the poor motherfucker who's the 0.00001% of people who aren't so lucky. You know what I mean? So that being said guys, please start low. This is what is known as the minimal effective dose, which is just taking enough that you feel effect, but not too much that it overwhelms your system. You never know, you might even be allergic to some of these substances. So again, it's good to take a very small amount of something, See if everything's okay and then you can continue. And it's always better to take too little than too much because if you take too little, all right, cool. You gotta wait a few days until you start again. Whereas if you take too much, <laughs> just gonna hold on and survive, I guess. <laughs> Might be a fun story to tell, but not so fun to live through. So with acid, I'd start low, maybe 50 micrograms and then see how you go from there. And with mushrooms, I'd start with one gram. And again, see how you go. I would argue that set and setting is more important than the dose and substance itself because ultimately it's going to be your mindset that is going to determine what kind of trip that you have. So set is really all about your mindset, whether you're in a positive or negative mood and it's fine to go into psychedelics a bit nervous. In fact, I would say it's good to go in nervous. If you, if you don't feel a shred of nerves whatsoever, then I would be concerned. I would question why you're doing these things. <laughs> so again, being a bit scared, being a bit nervous before going into it, that's fine. Just don't go into it in a low mood, right? So if you, let's say if you're in a really, if you're having a really depressing day or your girlfriend just broke up with you or you just got fired from your job, like just things like this, maybe in a moment of crisis, I would strongly recommend staying away from psychedelics until you're in a, a better mindset. To trip. But as many of you know, the mind... It's very important to know that mindset isn't just about being in a positive or negative mood, which is a pendulum swing that's constantly swinging to the left and the right, sometimes that you can't really control. But set, more importantly, refers to your mindset, right? Which is how you think, how you perceive reality, what quality thoughts are going into your mind from day to day, what language are you using, what inputs are you receiving? All this stuff is vitally important. Not just for going to a psychedelic trip, but just life itself, man. You gotta prep your mind. It's not only thinking like 
positive, like, you know, the new age. Just think positive, man. Because I think it's also important to acknowledge the darkness as well. But it's about putting your attention on something that's more practical and optimal. So, of course, you can't control every single piece of information that enters your mind, especially throughout your early years as a child. But what you can control is what you do with it now. What are you allowing into your mind sphere? Especially leading up to this potentially profoundly transformative experience that you might have. Are you playing Resident Evil in VR and putting all these horror images in your mind? Or maybe you're watching Kardashians and this low consciousness drivel that's just melting your brain. Or maybe the night before you take Mushroom, you decided to watch a 10-part documentary series on how fucked up Adolf Hitler was. And while this may seem like trivial entertainment, this significantly programs your mind whether you are aware of it or not. So again, be very wary on what books you are allowing into your consciousness, the movies, the music that you're listening to, the people that you're hanging out with, the food that you're eating, which greatly influences your mindset. This is a lifetime to study, right? Optimizing your mindset. This is what the whole self-help industry has based itself upon. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail. I think you guys get the point. So if your mind is all chaotic and have all these negative programs running in the background, then this will most likely come out through the trip. And this might not necessarily even be a bad thing, I mean, confronting your shadow can be a very positive experience, but it's also not necessary because the shadow is, and many people don't talk about this, but the shadow in its totality is impossible to integrate. I mean, yeah, it's good to acknowledge and honor and integrate certain parts, but to try and go on this mission to integrate the totality of your shadow, it's a never ending trip, man. So it's not so much about integrating and unifying with the shadow, but more about living in harmony with it. But again, this is a whole different topic. So do the defragging process before you go into your psychedelic trip. Clear your mind, install it with more positive things, so that way your machine can run smoother and you aren't getting these pop-up ads because you downloaded too much porn and now your system's running super slow. Just take care of your body and mind like it's a temple. It will help you go a long way. There are some books that I would strongly recommend reading that will greatly help you, not only with psychedelics, but just life in general. This includes The Kabbalion by The Three Initiates, best spiritual text I've ever read. So even though Carl Jung was not a psychedelic advocate, his material is highly relevant and useful for going through this individuation process and confronting the shadow and just step crossing over right to the other side. So cutting through spiritual materialism, this will help you avoid many common spiritual traps. And the bonus book that I'd recommend is The Daily Stoic. This will help ground you in reality and stop you from floating in the clouds of ignorance. Setting is your external environment, AKA where you trip. Outside in nature can be a fantastic idea, assuming that you know for a fact that no one is going to disturb you. You might be okay with seeing strangers, but then again, you don't know how you're gonna react when you're on a psychedelic. So it's better to be safe and sorry and maybe not do it in a place that is unpredictable. All it can take is one stranger to kind of freak you out and be like, oh fuck, he's looking at me, he knows I'm tripping, oh shit, he's gonna call the cops and blah, blah, blah. Gone this crazy loop. The best setting that I would recommend is actually go to a retreat, like an ayahuasca retreat or San Pedro, peyote, mushroom, whatever you can. If you can do it with a master shaman, in a legitimate center, they'll take care of everything for you and it'll probably be the most profound way you will trip. But again, we live in reality, not everyone has the time or the funds to have these type of experiences. So that being said, I would say that doing it in the safety of your own home or a friend's home or just any space which you know that no one is going to disturb. Clean up your environment, don't trip in the pig side. Uh, your physical environment is a direct reflection of your mindset. So if you can't be bothered cleaning up your room, what chances do you have <laughs> cleaning up your mind in these really intense realms? You know what I mean? You've got to think of these, it's all about the little things that you do. Cleaning up, having a healthy diet. And even if you don't believe in the spiritual stuff, you cannot deny that having a tidy room is much better than having a messy room. <laughs> At least in terms of just being able to think better. 
right? And just that little tiny difference of being able to think with more clarity, this is gonna greatly help you travel these psychedelic realms with more ease. Because I've had trips where it's been so overly confusing and my mind was overly fogged up and it was just too overwhelming and by the time the trip ended, even though what felt like I went through this really profound, fantastical trip, after it ended I felt like, shit man, I don't think I brought anything back because my mind was too... You know what I mean? So, <laughs> clear up your mind, <sighs> be grounded, centered, Make sure your mind's nice and clear. So that way when the psychedelic gods enter your consciousness, it's just a lot easier to know what's going on. Or at the very least, not get overwhelmed and confused. Another important thing to do, which relates to setting, is put your damn phone away. Let's turn it off, put it on do not disturb mode. I think your mind can go without the distraction. I don't want to sound like a purist and say that all technology is bad on psychedelics. No, no, no. I'm saying phone because you're just more, you're gonna be more tempted to go on social media and browse on stupid bullshit and have all these notifications. Ding, 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 ding. And of course, you might have the potential to receive some really horrible news. <laughs> Could even be your girlfriend breaking up with you. Could you imagine that? Oh, that would be a, that would be a wild trip. But if you are gonna use technology, just remember your original intention and don't get distracted. That's all I'm saying. It's not so much technology; it's just distraction. And I think. Phones are not good. <laughs> it's different if you're on your computer, you want to create music or edit or create something, you know, be uh, artistic with technology. That can be really, really great on psychedelics. Uh, I wouldn't recommend for or against it, but I could definitely imagine how it could be really profound using technology for creative purposes. I know I just gave you guys like a lot of don't do's, but a few potential activities that may be useful while under the psychedelic state is journaling, drawing, painting, playing music, and fill in the blank. And of course you can either choose to trip with music or without music. This is all preference. I think music can be great in anchoring you to a certain reality, especially if you're having a tough time. But Sometimes complete silence may be the exact thing you need. Uh, but if you are going to choose music, just have a good playlist. Uh, I might leave some in the description box below. I can, actually, you know, I'll leave my Spotify playlist. It's like a, a Medicina playlist, which would be really great for a psychedelic trip, I would imagine. I use this for meditation all the time. But I think it's best to have music that's calm. You don't want to play Slipknot and Machine Head as much as I love these bands. You don't want to play this through a psychedelic trip. You want to play nice, kind of atmospheric, background sort of music. Maybe even with zero or minimal lyrics, because lyrics prime your mind into thinking what the musician is thinking versus having your own space to think what you need to think. Could be bullshit, but just something I want to add. Just a little bonus thing that I would add is don't have any expectations. Have an intention. 100% know what you're doing this for and that kind of goes within the research thing Research what chemical you're doing why you're doing it. Just don't have any Expectations like this is gonna cure my depression or I'm gonna have a spiritual awakening Because you might But you might not and then that this sets up a disappointment and this can even lead into a, a resistant trip because you you go in for one thing but the psychedelic gods have different plans for you last essential principle which I'd like to add in this psychedelic guide is have a trip sitter slash shaman. It's always good to have someone there just in case shit hits the fan. Without a doubt I would say that the shamanic context is just, has usually been a lot more profound and I don't mean profound as in better that's all relative but just more profound that's it just more fantastical more memorable more wow holy shit this I, this is what people are talking about, you know what I mean? But I also understand why you wouldn't want to go to a shaman and Especially because there's so many charlatans and fakes and evil wolves dressed up in sheepskin that kind of deal But that kind of goes with everything in life, you know, all religious sex But at the very least have a trip sitter and no a trip sitter is not a shaman a trip sitter is there Literally just to hold space and make sure you don't 
you know, shit yourself or hurt yourself or whatever. That's literally all they're there for. Whereas a shaman is there to actively guide you through the experience. It's a much different dynamic. When it comes to trip sitting, I would say get someone who you would trust with your life. Pretty straightforward. If you have someone that you don't exactly trust, that thing can amplify into a bajillion and then you're having these super paranoid thoughts. You know, you, you never know how you could react to these trips. And if you're not with someone that you completely trust with your life, you're gonna have a bad time most likely. So yeah have a really good friend and make sure they don't try to project what they think is happening onto you. They're just there just to, they, they don't even have to be in the same room as you, but just knowing that someone is there, that could be the safety that you need to <sighs> let go. value from this content you wish to support the channel then I would highly recommend you going on patreon and becoming a monthly supporter this is the foundation of this channel and helps us do what we do and find future projects and documentaries and all sorts of things we've got some epic plans a lot of content in the world as well as epic content that we've already released in the channel so check it out maybe you missed one or two safe tripping and I'll see you guys on the other side peace I also want to give a shout out to my good friend Jason Stevenson who does awesome free guided meditations. It's always good to do some meditation training and prep your mind for these type of psychedelic experiences. So go check out the description box below, click the link and I'll see you on the other side.